I've got an engine in the frame. Welcome to Urban Monk TV. So the situation here in the shop has gotten kind of bad. Let me show you what I'm dealing with here lately. I have just got things stacked up everywhere because of my crazy busy life. It's Christmas time. I've got those two big boxes behind my uh, V-Strom there. Those are, hope my kids aren't watching this before Christmas, I really doubt it. Those are two um, electric scooters that they are getting for Christmas that I need to unbox and assemble. And I may do a video on that because two wheels is two wheels, man. And uh, I am frankly kind of excited to get on them and ride them myself. But um, those should be pretty cool. They go about 18 miles an hour and uh, have a nice steel frame to them. They're, they're not toys. They're uh, good scooters. Uh, but I've was thinking man those scooters are going to be parked in here to keep them from you know getting stolen and uh, it's just getting tight and so one of the things i can do to save space is to put the engine in the frame and free up that space over there and bring this all together so first i just got to get this cleaned up and organized So the approach I'm hoping to take, if any of you have watched the video of me taking the engine out of the frame, uh, you will see, and if you haven't, go ahead and watch that. Uh, I frankly have recently, just to give me an idea of how this is going to go back together. Uh, video and photographs are such a great record uh, and make such a good service manual of sorts when you're putting things back together, but that's an aside. Um, I wrestled and wrestled that engine out and it's heavy and my thought was um, now I've painted it and I'm going to ding it all up if I put it back in the same way. And I don't have the benefit of the center stand anymore because I've removed it. So we're going to do the lay the engine down on its side trick and put the frame down on the engine. That's the plan. Um, is it a well thought out plan? Not really. We're gonna see where this goes. And then just to avoid hard surface to hard surface contact a little bit, I'm just putting down an old bath mat and some rags and cardboard over the uh, metal of the lift and uh, so I'm not banging up my frame and uh, my engine too much. Somehow I've got to get that engine out of all of this clutter. Get it up there. Funny how you miss things. Just dawned on me I have to paint this.
was going to put these gloves on, but I've got better grip without them. That's all I want, really, is to uh, hold the engine well. And... to the bottom a little bit. Oh, and I pulled a little engine paint off down here, but I can touch that up. It's been on there so long. I am glad that I softened up all of my surfaces because that hard edge is against my cylinder head right now. I think that should be good. So I've got it here on the right hand side of the engine, you know, toward the number four cylinder uh, because that is the side of the frame that it came out of. And um, it's kind of kitty wampus here, so I'm thinking before I pick up my frame, I need to get this more like it's going to be oriented. So I'm going to prop it up with some 2x4s. And again, I'm softening my surfaces. See one problem already. Need to remove that breather that I put on the top of the head here. Um, let me talk about this a little bit. So I put this breather on. Uh, this is, you know, crankcase ventilation essentially. Uh, any pressure that's built up inside of the crankcase uh, and and inside the engine in general will vent up through the top here, and. On a stock GS550, this goes to a little bit of a reservoir that captures this stuff, and then that tube can be drained um, on a regular basis. And, you know, I thought that this might last a while if I change it frequently, but someone, I forget who it was, I apologize, I believe on Instagram, but maybe it was here on YouTube, uh, commented and said that if I go with this eventually, and I don't know what that time frame is, is going to fill up with oil and it's going to start dripping oil all over the engine and the carbs and make a mess and so he recommended just taking a hose and uh, you know running it maybe down and draining uh, to the ground uh, so I may do that for now I gotta take it off just to make clearance here and get the frame on
cleaned up, I'm gonna wire wheel a lot of the rust and stuff off of these parts that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, so we wanna put clean parts back together and rust free parts back together. I'm gonna take my time with this and I won't bother you guys with wire wheeling. You've seen me do that before. And uh, let's see, let's move along. This is fun. Okay, sorry guys, I started working on this and wasn't thinking about filming, uh, but I have put the first engine mount bolt in, and the first one I started with uh, is this one, the bottom rear, which goes completely through to here. So there's two tabs off of the bottom of the frame that those mount in. Sorry, I'm shaky at this angle. And uh, no spacers or anything, just simple washer on both sides and a lock nut. And that, as you can see, you know, centered the engine in the frame all the way around. And so that really just got all of my geometries where they need to be. to get the rest of this buttoned up or bolted up. And now I can slowly pivot the engine within the frame a little bit, which will allow me to put on these brackets up here and then put the bracket on in the back. Um, so I think that's a good first place to start is the rear bottom. So now that I've got one bolt through the back, the next logical one for me is this one right here. And I can just pivot the whole frame and just line it up. This is one of those that had this funny uh, nut that lives up underneath inside of a little cavity back in here. And uh, that's it. There's really nothing else to that nut. There's no washer here. Um, torque spec on these. Uh, let me look that up quick. Okay, all of the 10 millimeter um, engine mount bolts are 29 pound feet of torque, and then all of the 8 millimeter, which are going to be these smaller ones that'll be up on the front of the engine, those are uh, 14 and a half pound feet. about to 15. Now I'm going to go up to uh, 25-ish. Yeah. 29. There we go. And let me get the other one down here. Okay, so one thing I'm learning um, and kind of in hindsight thinking, why didn't I think of this before? I kind of know better. But uh, when I torqued down these two bolts, uh, then I aligned the engine and the frame to those points. And as I got here trying to put these front mount brackets on, things were too tight here. So the lesson there is leave things loose until you've got them all in and then start snugging them up. Uh, so I went back and un, untightened this one and uh, was able to get my bracket in by just prying the frame up a little bit and get it aligned and now I can get the bolts in. So we've got two bolts holding these brackets on each side and then this one big bolt will go down through this channel and hold it uh, to the engine. I think 
similarly, it's probably a good idea before I get things too snug here to run that bolt through. And there's no washer here. I would have thought there would be. So perhaps it's misplaced or maybe there never was one. I can go back and look at the original video. And if there wasn't, then uh, well then we'll just get one. Okay, so I'm hitting as I go through this bracket, so what I'm going to do is grab back here on the frame and just pull. Hopefully, that gives me enough alignment. Still hitting. Okay, so I can feel that I've got it down in there by just wiggling the frame like this. Gravity has dropped that bolt in enough to where it's just inside the bracket. And now I'm just going to give it gentle taps in. Yeah, it's making it. Okay, just to make a quick visit to what I've got then, I have the rear bottom, I've got bottom left, and then I've got the two front brackets in. At this point, uh, I think there's one more I'm going to do in this orientation, and then I'm going to tip the bike up on its, on its natural bottom here. And the one I'm going to do is this one right back here, which goes through, I don't know if I have this zoomed out enough, hang on. Okay, so the one I'm going to do now is back here, and then there's a spacer in here, and the bolt runs all the way through. It's this guy, with this spacer being up here like this. Actually, I've got that piece of wood in the way from my bolt. Maybe I can briefly lift this thing. Just, yeah, there we go. So the bolt goes through here into the spacer, which I'm going to have to lift the frame up just slightly to get it in. There you go. Again, keep things loose for now. Then that's going to come all the way through here. Oh, that was easy enough. Nut, or sorry, washer and then a nut. And on these two long bolts here, there's lock nuts on these. That front one did not have a lock nut. I question whether that's the way that should be. I may go buy a 10 millimeter lock nut for that front one um, because it doesn't have a lock washer on it even. And uh, you know, this bike had been into before I bought it so perhaps something got overlooked there. I think uh, with these points all in, we've got essentially one, two, three, four, five of the six that hold it in. I think we're ready to tip with five. that has to go down here and uh, I can barely reach it. I had left these bolts 
in the frame because the threads are in the frame. And so I'm in the habit of leaving bolts where they go to remember where they go. So I had to cover these up for the painting. I've got painter's tape on them. And now that I'm taking the tape off, I'm realizing I want to put these on the wire wheel a little bit. They're kind of a kind of a mess. Let me clean them up. Okay. So this guy lives right here. Two bolts on the bottom and then one uh, bolt. Where did I do with that? It's here somewhere. Oh, it's back there. So this is another one of those, let's see, right bottom front, that's the right bolt. This is another one of those oblong nuts that slides up underneath the engine in a kind of a cavity in there. Um, so I need to be able to reach in there and put that in. So I'm going to have to tip the whole thing. Actually, I realized I could just tip it on its face. And now that I can see up in here, I can see why I'm having so much trouble because it's not flat in here. And so as I was holding this in, I'm, I'm out of alignment. I don't know if you can see that. Anywho, let's try this again. I'm going to have to get my head in the way. I apologize. And just like that, I got it. All right, engine is in. Going to just run around and torque everything. guys we have an engine in the frame and it's uh, well I like how it looks let's just put it that way hey let me know in the comments what you guys think you know now that this thing's starting to come together we've got not a black frame we've got a very dark brown frame uh, we've got polished aluminum uh, you know the engine is what it is and the paint scheme is what it is what do you think and then uh, how that plays into the colors I've chosen for the tank because uh, now we can finally get kind of a feel for how this thing is going to look. Um, I'm really excited about this. This is a lot of fun to bring this back together. And I'm excited for more than one reason. This is awesome. And I just freed up a bunch of space in my garage by taking the engine off of that big stand I built for it. I can get that stand out of here. So uh, the most efficient place for a motorcycle engine is in the motorcycle from a space perspective. If you like what I'm doing, please give me the thumbs up. Uh, as of the recording of this video, I'm at like 992 followers, or sorry, subscribers. 
and uh, would love to get over that thousand mark just because you show a mountain climber a mountain and he's close to the top he's going to keep going uh, and then of course there'll be another mountain on the other side of that so we'll go for that but um, I really appreciate every one of you that are following and watching this uh, series and I hope to uh, see you next week and we'll take it the next step further. Thanks for watching. Thank you.